Hello there, I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'll share five tips for making the most of Corel Painter and your Wacom tablet. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, optimizing the pressure sensitivity of your pen. Wacom pens have an amazing range of pressure sensitivity, which allows an artist to draw thick lines by pressing down firmly, or thin lines by pressing down lightly with the pen. In addition to varying the width of a line, artists can also vary the opacity of brush strokes as well. This makes for a drawing experience that feels natural and intuitive. Not all artists use the same amount of pressure while drawing. For this reason, both the Wacom Control Panel and Curl Painter allow an artist to adjust the sensitivity of the pen for a lighter or a heavier touch. Let's start by adjusting the global pen pressure in the Wacom Control Panel. Under the Pen tab, drag the Tip Feel slider towards soft or firm, depending on how you like to draw. I tend to press down very firmly when I draw, so I set my pressure sensitivity one notch towards firm. This makes it much easier for me to draw a thick to thin line and vary my brush opacity. You can test the current pressure setting by pressing down with your pen. You'll see the pressure slider move as you press harder. Once you've chosen a setting, try making a few strokes in Corel Painter using the Scratchboard tool found in the Artist Favorites category. If you're still not satisfied with the pressure setting, open the Wacom Control Panel and adjust the pressure until it feels natural to draw a thick to thin line. In most cases, a global adjustment to pen pressure in the Wacom Tablet Control Panel is sufficient, but if you want maximum control over your brush strokes, you can adjust the brush calibration in Corel Painter. Let's try that. We'll click on Window, Brush Control Panels, Brush Calibration. This opens a palette with sliders that let you fine-tune your pressure settings. Rather than move the sliders, it may be easier to draw a pressure curve with your pen, but we'll come back to that shortly. First, you want to make sure that Enable Brush Calibration is checked. You can use this checkbox to enable and disable calibration for a brush. Let's go ahead and calibrate a brush. I'll choose the Scratchboard tool again, and I'll make sure Enable Brush Calibration is checked. Next, I'll want to define the pressure curve. I could use the sliders, but it'll be easier to draw the curve with my pen. To do this, click on the icon in the bottom right of the palette. This opens a window with a little sketch pad that you can draw on. Draw a stroke the way you would if you were drawing or painting with that brush. For example, when I'm inking with the Scratchboard tool, I like my brush to be able to make a wide range of thick to thin line widths. So the type of stroke I draw will start out with the lightest pressure I intend to use, and then it'll gradually increase to the maximum pressure I intend to use for that brush. When I'm finished drawing my stroke, I'll close the calibration window, and then I'll give the brush a test to see if it works as expected. It may take some experimenting to find the optimal pressure curve. For the most part, the brushes in Painter are already well optimized, so you only need to do this for a few select brushes if you think it's necessary to get more control over your brush strokes. Here's another example. When I'm using brushes that only vary the opacity and not the stroke width, a more subtle transition from light to firm pressure is more desirable, so I can build up opacity slowly and evenly. In this example, I'm using a chalk brush. I don't want a lot of opacity to completely cover my paper grain, so it makes sense to set this brush so that it takes a lot of pressure to build up to full opacity. I'll calibrate this brush by pressing down very firmly with my pen, and I won't vary the pen pressure at all. This ensures my strokes are always very light while using this chalk brush. If I click back on my scratchboard tool, it's retained its own unique calibration setting. If your pen has an eraser, you can also customize the pressure sensitivity for that as well. Take some time to optimize your pen pressure and it'll make your drawing and painting feel much more natural. Number two, customizing the pen buttons. You may have noticed that there are two buttons on the side of your pen. You're probably cursing at them right now because you always seem to click on them by mistake. If that's true, then you may benefit from customizing the functions of the pen buttons to better suit your workflow. In the Wacom Control Panel, you can look under the Pen tab for menus that can change the function of the pen buttons. You can choose from a wide range of keys, key combinations, and commands. Some examples would be Erase, Spacebar to pan your view of the canvas, or right-click to bring up additional commands. Personally, I like to choose a modifier of Control plus Alt for the button closest to the tip. If I hold the button and drag my pen, I can easily resize my brush. This is much faster than using the numerical sliders, bracket keys, or even pressing the keys on your keyboard. The second button I set to right-click. This works best for my workflow, but feel free to experiment to see what works best for you. Now I do want to mention that these customizations can either apply to all slash other applications, or just to a single application meaning I can set the buttons to work one way in Corel Painter and have a completely different function in Photoshop, for example. If you do create a profile for an application, make sure it's selected when you reopen the Wacom Control Panel if you want to edit the shortcuts again for that particular application. 
Otherwise, all slash other may be selected and you'll be scratching your head trying to figure out why the changes you made don't work in Painter. If your pen has an eraser, you can also customize that as a button if you want it to do something other than erase. Now those buttons are your friend. Number three, using brush expressions. Most art applications support pen pressure, which does a great job of varying the look of the brush strokes using size and opacity. However, Corel Painter is one of the few art applications that takes full advantage of what the Wacom pens can do. For example, if your tablet supports pen tilt, you can tilt your pen while drawing to get a different looking mark than you would if you kept the pen upright. A good real world example of this would be drawing with the side of a pencil rather than the tip. In Corel Painter, this is known as a brush expression. Brush expressions can perform a number of feats, most of which are compatible with all Wacom tablets, but there are a few that require a specific tablet and a specific type of pen. For example, the airbrush pen is the only pen that can use the airbrush expression, which lets you control the flow of your airbrush paint with a wheel on the pen. The rotation expression can only be used with the art pen, which lets you rotate the barrel of the pen to draw with a chiseled edge. Because there are so many options, brush expressions really deserve their own video. So I'll keep this short and just say it's worth experimenting with these options to see the different results you can get. I encourage you to play with these settings. And don't worry about messing up a brush. You can simply click on the reset brush icon in the properties bar to reset the brush to its default settings. Number four, navigating with touch. If your tablet supports touch, you can use your fingers to do things like drag with two fingers to pan your view of the canvas, twist with two fingers to rotate the canvas, pinch to zoom in and out, and invoke commands using custom gestures. For example, I can tap with five fingers to bring up my on-screen keyboard. You can add your own gestures under the touch tab in the Wacom control panel. Number five, streamlining your workflow with express keys and radial menu shortcuts. Depending on the model of the Wacom tablet you own, you may have anywhere from a couple to a ton of express keys. Express keys are buttons on your tablet that you can assign shortcuts and commands to. This makes it easy to put commonly used features at the push of a button. Here's some examples of how I set up my express keys on my various devices. I highly recommend setting up and using your express keys because they'll save you from hunting through menus, which adds up to more time you can spend on making art. It's also possible to add loads of shortcuts to an on-screen radial menu and on-screen buttons. You can find that under functions, on-screen controls, and the Wacom control panel. So there you go, those are five ways you can make the most of Corel Painter and your Wacom tablet. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to click the like button, and if you'd like more digital art tips, make sure to subscribe now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.